Hi everyone, my name is Ollie. I am a final year medical student at the University of Warwick. Now today's question is ultimately, how many times did you apply to medical school? Several of you sent variations on this and I'll try and cover those in this video. So how many times did you apply? Were you successful in your first go? How many times would you have applied? And this is a, a really interesting question. So just very briefly to summarize my story in like 30 seconds, I did not do super well in my A-levels. I elected to go and do a first degree at Newcastle University in cellular and molecular biology with a view to applying for graduate entry medicine. Afterwards, at the end of my first degree, I had to make the choice between doing a PhD in the molecular biosciences or going and doing graduate entry medicine, which is obviously ultimately what I elected to do. So I applied in October 2016 for 2017 entry to medical school and I was successful on my first go and got a place on a graduate entry programme. So there are a few things I think to unpack here, which is that just because you are successful or not successful in any given application cycle to medical school, I do not think reflects very well how good either a candidate for medical school you ultimately are or how good a doctor you will be. I don't think it has any implication on either of those things. And I think that's because everyone's circumstances are slightly different. And again, I'm going to try and unpack this more. So when you apply for graduate entry medicine, this isn't a problem that affects people for undergraduate entry, but you have the option of applying for graduate entry specific programs, which are funded by the government and are usually accelerated. So say four years rather than five, or you can go on and apply for five-year or six-year undergraduate standard entry programs, which are not funded by the government and must be financed yourself. I'm not going to get into the finances in this video, but I was not in a situation where I would have been able to afford, by any stretch of the imagination, uh, an undergraduate non-funded standard program. So this meant that I had to apply exclusively for graduate entry programs in order to get that funding. When you do that, you accept the reality of the situation that the competition ratios are much higher. There are far fewer of these funded graduate entry places than there are regular places. So this puts an extra set of barriers in your way. The entrance exam scores, whether that's the UCAT, the BMAT, uh, the GAMSAT becomes involved because that's purely an entrance exam for graduate entrance to medicine. The scores are higher or rather the standards that are expected of you are higher. And the same I gather is true when it comes to interview. And so with this in mind, I was, I was very much in a situation where I would apply to places where I could and I would go wherever accepted me because the odds of me getting a place on one of these courses was lower because the entry standards are higher and there are fewer places. So I applied to four graduate entry programs. I think they were Barts, Oxford, Warwick and Newcastle for their graduate entry program. I only received one interview invite, which was for Warwick. And then I subsequently received an offer because I must have performed relatively well at interview. Why do I think this was? Um, I think it's because my entrance exam scores, so my, my UCAT score, was essentially not very high. I scored a 693, I think, on average for each section, which is an okay score. For graduate entry medicine, is not that competitive. Certainly, probably not appropriate for somewhere like Newcastle. And this has really shaped my, my perspective, obviously, because I was successful in my first round of application, but what does that really mean? I actually only had a hit rate of 25%, which is not very high. And if I had, say, been entirely unsuccessful in my first application, had then applied a year later, and say I'd have got four offers for graduate entry medicine or three, would that make me more successful the second time around? I don't know. It depends on the metric that we want to use. I think the key point that I'm trying to get across with this, with this ramble is that it is incredibly dependent on your personal context and situation and what options are available to you. For example, I had a science degree. That meant that I didn't really have to sit the GAMSAT because there are enough universities and medical schools available to me that would only require me to take the UCAT. I had the luxury of not having to sit the GAMSAT. If I had had to sit the GAMSAT, that would have introduced 
a whole load of challenges that I never had to deal with. I didn't need to go to medical school in a particular geographical location, for example, which I know many people do. If you have kids in school, or you have a partner, or you have family that you need to be near, you are geographically restricted. So again, you have to work to what the medical schools in those areas require of you. You might only be able to apply to one medical school a year or two medical schools and say you're not able to get a place in that very reduced pool of medical schools in a given application cycle. Does that mean that you are any more of a failure or any less of a success? No, obviously it doesn't because say in my application cycle I got rejected from three before interview <laughs> and that was with the luxury to go literally anywhere I wanted. So to come back to the question at hand, was I successful in my first round of applications? Yes, I happen to be. That is not a reflection of me being an especially strong candidate or a really good future doctor, which obviously I hope I am, which I've not got any way of knowing at this point particularly. All it means is that in that year, in that application cycle, in that interview that I sat, the dice happened to roll my way, the cards happened to stack right in the deck. Could I repeat it if I wanted to? I have no idea. I genuinely don't know, because I've only sat the UCAT once, I've only been through the interview cycle once. Just to briefly touch on the last question, which was uh, how many times would I have applied? That's really tough and I honestly don't know. Going into the process, I actually had an agreement with the people who were going to fund my PhD uh, when I was leaving Newcastle that if I wasn't successful in getting a place at medical school in the, the 2017 cycle, they would have taken me for the first year of the PhD programme because this was a, a four-year doctoral training partnership and the way these work is they combine a master's degree and then three years of the PhD component into one programme. So the deal that I had, and I was exceptionally lucky to have this, was they were like, look, we know you want to go to medical school because you told us in the interview. I was quite candid with them about that. The odds are that you won't be successful, as all candidates that apply to medical school are. The odds are that you won't be successful because that's just the way the statistics are. With that in mind, if you're not successful, we will let you do the first year of the programme, the master's year, which will involve just gathering a lot of the data that you will need for the project. We will then let you apply for medical school a second time. If you are successful, we will release you with a master's degree because you will have completed that first part of the process and we will reallocate the second part of the project. However, if you are not successful in this second cycle, we would then need to have a conversation about whether or not you wanted to stay and complete the full remainder of the PhD programme, the three years, or you wanted to leave. And at that point, we would be expecting you to commit to the programme or to leave. And having that flexibility was, was something huge to me at the time, because it gave me the, the flexibility of a funded master's degree if I didn't get into medical school, and that's huge. But how many times would I have kept going? I don't know. Would I have stuck with the PhD and tried twice, done the PhD and maybe tried later? Would I have tried three, four, five times? I know people that have taken five tries to get into medical school and they're doctors now and they're doing great. It's difficult, it's a really, really tough question. But to answer the central question, how many times did I apply to medical school? I applied once in the 2016-17 cycle. I was successful on my first go with a hit rate of 25%. But now four years later, I'm staring down the barrel of my final medical school exams with a job already in place to start work in August. And that's really bizarre, really surreal. How many times would I have continued to apply? I don't know. But the one, the one message that I would ask you to take away from this reflective, weird ramble video that this is, getting into medical school in a given cycle is not a good or reliable marker for how good a medical student you would be or how good a doctor you would be. Because I think genuinely that it is so much more dependent on external factors that have actually nothing to do with medical school. They are down to your finances, they are down to your caring situation, they are down to your geographical flexibility. And these are all widening access problems. These are not academic problems, these are not motivation or aspiration or suitability to be a doctor problems. These are more systemic problems that have systemic solutions. And all I mean to say is that if, 
if you don't get into medical school in a given year, for the vast, vast, vast majority of people, the overwhelming majority, you are very likely not the problem at the centre of it all. Something hasn't worked out at some part of the very elaborate and difficult process, but please keep your chin up, ask others for help, try and get interview prep, application prep from people that you know, from people that are willing to help. I'm always willing to help, but don't give up. Please do keep going. If you think that you would be a good medical student and a good doctor, then the overwhelming evidence suggests that you actually will. So please keep it together and please keep applying. Thanks guys and good luck. If you've enjoyed this video guys, there are three ways that you can help and support the channel. The first is by liking, commenting and subscribing. The second is you can buy me a coffee using my Ko-Fi link and help keep me awake during the editing process. My eye bags are Gucci. The third is you can use my referral link in the description below to save yourself 10% of Complete Anatomy 2021, my favourite anatomy learning tool. Take care and I will see you next time.